Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Ooh. December, we have, what, two and a half more weeks of 2023? How is that possible? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. For those of you who might be here for the first time or watching for the first time, my name is Reverend Alice Reed, and I am the spiritual director here. And uh, we have been looking at this topic this month of wholeness, of wholeness. And there's a, there's a, um, a great little writing I found by Dr. Bill Plotkin. Bill is a psychologist and an author and a soul guide. And he uses the wisdom and the intelligence of nature to guide people on their spiritual path. And he writes this about wholeness. As Carl Jung repeatedly declared, our goal is wholeness, not perfection. People living soul-centrically are not untroubled or unchallenged. They are not beyond experiencing times of confusion, mistakes, and tragedies. They have by no means healed all their wounds. They are simply on the path to wholeness to becoming fully human with all the inevitable defects and distresses inherent in the human story and with all the promise held by our uniquely human imagination. So he writes about this idea of wholeness that it's not necessarily synonymous with our idea of perfection. Um, I, I think that um, we have this saying, if you if you've been around this particular philosophy for any amount of time, you've probably heard this line, whole, perfect, and complete. And when we talk about perfection, we're, we're not talking about the, the human idea of perfection, that, you know, everything's all lined up and perfect, not a hair out of place. I thought about coming to, to the service this morning with the ball cap on and a pair of dungarees to make my point, uh, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> because like you, I have my own human experience of, of what I, uh, my ideas of what uh, perfection are. And I'm always trying to overcome them. I'm always trying to overcome them so that I can really step into this idea of wholeness. And so we're marrying this um, topic of wholeness with some of the traditions that are practiced in uh, some of the holy days in December. I personally really enjoy drawing from tradition because I really believe that in the various traditions that are in our world that are celebrated by the Jewish people, by the Buddhist people, by the um, Christian people, um, by the, the we call ourselves religious scientists, even though we're called spiritual, Centers for Spiritual Living, I really believe that all the traditions have meaning and depth for us. And if we can continue to, you know, like, like the strings on a guitar, we can continue to pluck at them. We can find the resonance within ourselves that's very meaningful. So we're, while we're looking at wholeness, I've also, <clears throat> we're also created a um, I'm calling it a metaphysical interspiritual advent. <laughs> you know, that's one, <clears throat> one of the fun things about this philosophy is we get a lot of license. And so, and so um, those of you who might um, have practiced these in your childhood, you'll forgive me and the licenses that I take, but the, the candle we lit last week was for hope. And the second candle in the and we talked about hope quite a bit. And this candle that I light now is for peace. The other um, uh, artifact that we have on the platform this morning is the menorah. And the menorah is the representation for the Jewish people of the coming together and um, coming to a place where they could reclaim the temple and they could burn the oil for a full eight days, which consecrated the temple. Um, the Maccabees 
in that era, in that time, in the story of Hanukkah, had um, decided to take back the temple because they had been oppressed by the Greeks in that day. And so this festival of lights known as Hanukkah is really the opportunity to remember the taking back of their power and to finding that peace when they were able to come home to their temple. When we look at peace and the, the other holiday that is uh, prevalent in December is Bodhi Day. And it's the acknowledgement of the enlightenment of the Buddha. And while there aren't any accoutrements or candles for Bodhi, what, Bodhi Day and for Buddhism, what we know about Buddhism is it's about the light within. And the enlightenment that the Buddha experienced and then uh, the Buddha was the way shower for all the followers who were looking for that same peace and tranquility within themselves. And when you look up the word peace, the definition in the dictionary, um, again, like hope, talks about what it is not, <laughs> right? Peace is the freedom from disturbance. Um, it's also known, it, they also use the words tranquility and quiet in the dictionary. And often you hear that peace is the absence of war. Anybody heard that before, right? I've seen the little lawn so signs <laughs> with that. Um, but uh, Martin Luther King reminds us this. He says, peace is not the absence of conflict, but the existence of justice for all people. And so when we come to a place of peace, as we begin to lean into this idea of peace, peace is that place of centeredness within ourselves. When we can come to a reconciliation, if you will, with um, all the varying things that are happening in our lives. Um, and I, you know, as I look around the world, the global view of what's going on in the world, I imagine during this Hanukkah season and the Festival of Lights, it's pretty difficult for our Jewish brothers and sisters and even ourselves to have a sense of peace with the war that's happening in the Middle East. And, and we have the example of the Buddha and even the Christ who talked about that there was a peace that, that we draw from that comes within no matter what's going on around us. But it's not always easy. I think as we even look at the idea of um, one of my favorite Buddhist teachers is uh, Pima Chodron, sometimes pr referred to as Pema Chodron, and I never know which is correct. But she's this beautiful uh, Buddhist nun, and uh, one of my favorite talks of hers was when she was talking about meditation and getting to that place of peace and calm and tranquility and she described her experience. And she said, yes, today when I came here and we began to meditate, I sat here and I thought, that woman looked at me kind of strange. I wonder if she thinks I'm wrong. I wonder if she doesn't like what I'm wearing. I wonder if I'm doing things right. <laughs> it was a beautiful and vulnerable description of being at peace with who we are that our minds are meaning-making machines and they're always moving in our, in our head. There's always something to think about. There's always something to get our attention. And she went on to talk about how once she noticed those thoughts, she simply let them be. And that is the idea that peace gives us, that we can, we can see the things that are disturbing us. We can see the things that are around us. And not, I don't want to confuse peace with um, being complicit with things that are going on in the world that are unacceptable. Peace is when we center ourselves enough to find the peace within to then inform how we speak, how we act, be a little kinder. I love that song, thank you. The, um, to find that kindness within ourselves. The peace that we're talking about is a peace that generates from within us. <clears throat> and a lot of times, excuse me, one more minute. 
<coughs> a lot of times we have difficulty. We think that, you know, <coughs> we need the, uh, you know, we need the perfect environment. You know, we need to be up on the mountaintop. No distractions. With our beautiful cloak on. And we just sit there and meditate. And yet um, we can find peace in, in the most tumultuous experiences. And that's exampled for us from, from many folks. I think that when we begin to look at the example of the Christmas story, that is the, that is the cultural holiday of the US, there are certainly our um, marketing and uh, retailers embrace Christmas. Um, for me, what I have found is that Christmas is a time for me to, to find meaning, just like the Buddhists find peace in themselves, to find that deeper meaning in myself for the holiday, for what it is. Oh, I got a frog. <coughs> that, would be, that would be excellent. Bruce, thank you. <laughs> I know you're not Bruce. <laughs> Josh. <laughs> Our sound person does a Bruce Springsteen experience, <laughs> so I often confuse them. Thank you. Oh, um, thank you so much. So we were talking about Bruce Springsteen? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I don't think so, but, but if you want that experience, you need to talk to Josh. He'll, he'll plug you in. I think we're talking about Christmas. We're talking about the, what the meaning of Christmas is and what it is that we can make it mean for us so that we can um, find that peace within ourselves. I think the Christmas story embodies this beautiful idea of a, of a, a pivotal place, a place where, where humankind had the opportunity to pivot from a relationship with a punishing a parental figure God to moving into a God that embraced all its creation and loved its creation and imbued its creation with itself. That for me is the message behind the Christmas story and we, and we often hear that, um, we hear of Jesus of Nazareth referred to as the Prince of Peace. But if you read anything about the historical Jesus, well, he was kind of a badass. <laughs> he was a rebel. He was absolutely disgusted with the way his, his prized religion, he loved Judaism, he loved the religion of his time, but he did not care for how it was demonstrated in the temples. At the time, if you were, um, if you were ill or poor, you could not access God. There was, you could not enter the temple without an offering. You could not enter the temple unless you were perfectly healthy. There was this idea of perfection and that that was the only way to access God. And of course, when Jesus came and saw that, he, was, he, was, um, he fought against that. And the way he fought against that was to begin to give people access to the God that he knew, the God that was loving the God that was accepting, the God that knew the wholeness inherent in all humankind. And so that's the historical Jesus of Nazareth that we don't always hear about, but it's the one that I love because he's the one that fights for the underdog. He's the one that makes sure that the people know that they are loved. That is the message that uh, came with this this demarker, if you will, about humankind and how um, at least the Jews and then later the Christians could begin to have a different relationship with God. And I find peace in that. And it's interesting to me that 2,000 plus years later, we still don't get it a lot of the time. <laughs> We still other. We still find ourselves in judgment. We, we have judgments about good and bad. We have 
you know, what's going on in the Middle East. I mean, there's, it's, it's, it's two factions within a culture that are causing all this harm, that are, that are so angry and so incensed and so uh, sure that the only way to peace is to obliterate the people that are unlike them. And it's very misguided. You know that. It goes without saying, but I'm, I can be Captain Obvious sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it, it goes without saying that, that that is not how we achieve peace. I think that um, it's an important example to us, though, to recognize and to see the, the otheringness, to see the persecution, the prejudice, the, the, um, the, the hatred, if you will, and to look within ourselves about where anything like that lives, even subtly, even subtly in our own country. I, um, you know me, I like the movies. <laughs> There's a new movie out on Netflix called Rustin. And if you haven't seen Rustin, it's an untold story that I was not aware of about a man, uh, Bayard Rustin, he was an African-American out gay man in the late 50s and early 60s who was very involved in the civil rights movement. And much of, he, had, he had a, a genius for community building and he had a passion for equality. He was brought up as a Quaker and he uh, was brought up to really stand in the truth of who he was. And so in the late 50s and early 60s, it, was not the time to be out and gay and black. So what you, what you, there's so much I could say, and I want you to watch the movie and enjoy it. Um, what you see in this, this picture is you see the, rep the representation of a man who knew how to stand in who he was and in his passion and his genius. Despite the fact that in the time that he was coming up in the time that he was useful. There were a lot of people who wanted to push him aside because he was gay. They wanted to push him aside because he wasn't like everyone else. He was, and we're just talking about the people who were active in the civil rights movement, black and white, together. And what he's famous for is actually organizing the March on Washington. And how you probably, you know, if you're not a history buff, you're probably very aware of the famous Martin Luther King speech of I Have a Dream, where he stood in the mall in Washington before 250,000 people. That march was organized in less than two months. And uh, Bayard Rustin was the genius behind that. And I bring him to you because he's the perfect commingling or coalescence, if you will, of this idea of um, being so solid and standing in the peace of who you are and your authentic self that nothing can really disturb your peace. And that you, when we know who we are, when we are at peace with ourselves, that doesn't mean we don't get disturbed or confused like that quote I ran, read at the beginning of the, my talk here with you and my remarks, but to, to come again and again to the peace that knows no disturbance within ourselves, then we do amazing things. That's when, when we can be authentic and grounded in our peace and in our power, that is when we are expressing that power and that presence that moves in and through each one in all life. And yet we still have a, a world where we can get lost. We get lost in the, um, in the distractions. We get lost in the, in the things that make us uncomfortable. We get lost in the things that we don't think are right. We get lost in our judgments. When I tell that story of um, Bayard Rustin, and I stand before you as um, a heterosexual white woman, I, I'm not sure 
well, I have, you know, I have my own little battles to face about being in my own authenticity. I'm not sure I can really grasp what it is like to be considered, because whiteness and heterosexuality is normalized in our country, I'm not sure I know what it's like to be considered a deviant or different, to be ostracized, to be, I've had my experience with bullying, but you know, it, you grow out of some of these things, but there's some people who deal with this for a lifetime. And I think when we other, there's some part of us when we, when we push away that that is different or that that is not normalized in our culture, I think we're abandoning, we're abandoning God in some form. We're abandoning the divine. We're abandoning the truth of humanity. The, the, the thing that happens, and it's, it's, it's on social media all the time, you, you know, it's so easy to get on a high horse. Thanks, cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so easy to get on a high horse and to begin to look around us and to have our, our attitudes and the things that are important to us and to be, you know, really get on that, that um, platform, if you will, and to dehumanize the other. So the way that we move through this, the way that we come back to peace, the peace that knows only good, the peace that only knows truth, we come back to that by rehumanizing. And we rehumanize, we come back to seeing each other as humans by sitting down with each other, by getting to know each other. So you have this attitude or political leaning that I don't agree with. You have this lifestyle that's different than mine. Well, who are you? What do you, you know, tell me about your family. Tell me about the things you love. Tell me about the things that you're struggling with. And when we can meet each other eye to eye, when we can come back to that place, well, that's the message of the Buddha. That's the message of Jesus. That's the message of coming home to our temple. That's the message of coming home to peace. We, we rehumanize. We, we do it through, I have a lovely list here, compassion, listening, and empathy, kindness, listening, communication, listening, respect, vulnerability, listening, <laughs> forgiveness, presencing ourselves. Did I say listening? <laughs> yeah, listening, being present, seeing each other for who we are. God in form. Right? That's the gift. God in form today. That's the gift. And it's, oh, you can look around. You're sitting next to God. You're sitting behind God. You're sitting in front of God. I'm standing here as God. There is no place that that holiness is not. Ernest Holmes talks about peace in the Science of Mind textbook and in the glossary. Those of you who are taking any classes, here's a hint. If you got any questions, go to the glossary, the Science of Mind textbook. <laughs> There's some great information. And so Ernest, Ernest Holmes, who is the founder of Science of Mind and the Center for Spiritual Living Movement, writes this about peace. A state of inner calm, an inner calm so complete that nothing can disturb it. The peace which comes only from the knowledge that it is all. The infinite is always at peace because there's nothing to disturb it. A realization of our oneness with omnipresence brings peace. The peace which is accompanied by a consciousness of power. A realization of the oneness with omnipresence brings peace. Leaning into this idea again, we talked about it a little bit last week, of where our divinity and our humanity meet. It's right where you're sitting. It's between your eyes, it's in your chest, it's in your heart. That's where divinity and humanity meet. And I, and I thought <clears throat> that I would end with a treatment from Ernest Holmes. 
And um, I invite you to take this treatment in mindfully. I also invite you that if there's anything that comes in, comes up for you, any judgments or resistance as I read this, I invite you to just breathe into it, to let go of that for a moment and to accept these words that Ernest Holmes says because Ernest Holmes claims that you are the Christ. And he says so in this beautiful treatment. Be still and know that I am God. I am the Christ, the son, the daughter of the living God within me. I am the principle of peace within me. I am the manifestation of love within me. My mind is poised in peace and beauty. All sense of fear or doubt is gone. I rest in calm, trust and rely on the law of spirit to bring good into my experience. And Ernest Holmes speaks this in the first person, so accept this as when he says I, he means you as the I. I contend with none, argue with none, and I am filled with wonderful peace and light. There is no uncertainty where my future, about my future, and no fear as a result of my past. I live in an eternal now, which is filled with good alone. Goodness and beauty follow me everywhere. Peace and joy accompany me. Happiness and wholeness fill my entire being with the realization of love and perfection. I am the Christ, the son, the daughter of the living God within me. This inner mind of mine is now divine and complete. It has no worries and no fears. It is whole, complete, and satisfied. I look back over all previous experience and find that it was good very good. I look toward the future and find that it is good and very good. And I look at the present and find that it is also good and very good. God is in all, over all, and through all. I am the Christ, the Son, the daughter of the living God within me. I am the spirit of confidence. I am poised in love and reason. I am the perfect law of truth and the complete presence of beauty. Take this in. As you say this in your own mind, I am the Christ, the son, the daughter of the living God within me. If I am the Christ, and so it is, <laughs> if I am the Christ and you are the Christ, then your perceived enemies are the Christ as well. There are no exceptions to wholeness. There's no exception to, to love being having an opportunity to express itself by means of all of us. This is the message of the holidays. This is the message of peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. I am going to do a, a little spiritual mind treatment. I bet I confused our guest pianist a little bit when I started a treatment. <laughs> he was like, come up, should I stay down? <laughs> Thank you. So let's just take that place of I am the Christ into our hearts. Let us know this for ourselves. Let us know this for each other. Let us know this for our beloveds. Let us know this for the people that frustrate us. Let us know this for the people that annoy us. Let us know this in the institutions that serve us. Let us know this in the institutions that make us crazy. Let us know this in times of peace and let us know this in times of conflict. Let us know that Christ, the personification of divinity and humanity, is everywhere we look, not only during this holiday season, but every day, 
every waking moment. We let go. We let love. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. Blessed be. Ashe.